Vice President Kamala Harris says a huge part of her economic plan is to increase the number of affordable homes. She is proposing an incentive of up to $25,000 for first-time home buyers. Campaigning in Raleigh Friday, Vice President Kamala Harris says homeownership. And sadly, right now, it is out of reach for far too many. Real estate agent Cameron Lust notes a down payment is not the only barrier first-time home buyers face. Closing costs can be three to three and a half percent, uh, along with, you know, having that liquid capital or liquid cash to put towards the due diligence. A down payment is just a, a piece of that puzzle. He says without all the details of Harris's plan, it's hard to say how it could impact the housing market. It could potentially inflate prices. I wanted to discuss with all about the policy issues surrounding home affordability. Uh, you guys are following the channel, looking into uh, the information that we provide and hopefully making some decisions based off of that information. And one of the talking points that has been recently mentioned is the $25,000 incentive for first time home buyers uh, that the Democratic Party is uh, proposing. Now, this has been in the proposal um, since the Biden Harris administration. So, why didn't it work then? Why hasn't it actually come out? Well, it wasn't passed. Um, and I believe that there are many reasons as to why it has not passed. But um, I wanted to drill into both of the policies to see, um, compare and contrast which party is leading with a logical standpoint to this versus uh, making false promises, essentially. So I went ahead and asked ChatGPT a couple of questions, basically said, uh, for the 2024 presidential agenda, both Democrat and Republicans have outlined different strategies to address housing affordability and support home buyers. Let's look at the first one, since uh, the new administration has not come out with theirs just yet. They're just kind of talking points that they have. Let's, let's look at the current, um, because let's face it, vice president, is currently in there and uh, I would imagine a lot of these things will pass forward regardless of whether they've happened in the past three and a half years or not. So looking at this first uh, section here, which is the democratic proposal, tackling zoning and land use barriers. The administration is launching a program to reduce the restrictive zoning laws and limit housing development. This is intended to increase the supply of affordable houses by making it easier to build, particularly in high demand areas. Uh, for me, guys, we'll stop at that one. I think that makes sense. I mean, I don't see any issues with this uh, in particular, uh, as I'm looking at the concept of uh, fixing zoning, I have to think, okay, are there any areas where the zoning currently in our uh, city uh, that could be building and are having issues? I personally am not seeing any. Um, as per the flips that we have done, of course, you have your, your counties and, and your uh, inspections that need to go through the, the proper channels. But I'm just not seeing that. It's, it's almost like a concept of uh, if we could convert this area where hotels are, are intended for restaurants, uh, let's make that into housing areas. People will start building more for homes. I just don't see that as a logical standpoint simply because those areas are going to still be higher priced in the land value, thus creating not really an opportunity for investors to come in to actually make money in doing this. Investors don't invest uh, to lose money. Uh, keep that in mind. Second one is to expanding affordable housing financing. There are plans to expand financing options for affordable, energy efficient and resilient homes, uh, including incentives to converting commercial properties to residential use. Port for first time home buyers proposal includes expanding down payment assistance, such as the $25,000 credit for the first time home buyers, which aims to make home ownership more attainable by reducing the initial financial burden. Um, I'm going to come back to that uh, pretty big talking point on this and then promoting uh, equity in housing. The administration is also focused on promoting fair housing practices, increasing the availability of affordable renting units through various federal programs. Again, no plan there. 
Um, now let's look at the Republican proposal. Now this, according to a new estimate, the U.S. is short four and a half million homes. Okay, that was in 2022. I don't know what it's like now, but NAHB President Jim Tobin is with me. We're not building enough homes. Can you spell out the reasons why we're not building? Interest rates, that's that's the number one killer of the marketplace right now. And shelter inflation is the largest problem with inflation coming down, right? We're stuck in this kind of the low threes with inflation, but shelter inflation is over 5%. If we can put more supply on the marketplace, drive shelter inflation so down. So why can't you? Because why can't you? we're financing right now, uh, AD and C financing, that's the, the financing mechanism, acquisition development, construction financing, is 12 to 13% on, a, on one of those loans. Uh, we have low Local regulatory costs are absolutely killing our, our members because of delays. Uh, and then finally, uh, regulatory burdens at the federal level are killer too. But we did. We had we, we had a, a better regulatory environment three or four years ago. We had this boom after COVID. People were, were looking to buy new homes, uh, and our, our industry was doing great. Uh, the challenge we have now, but inflation is absolutely the driver. People are pulling back from the marketplace because they don't want to have a seven handle on a mortgage, especially when they're sitting on a three or four percent mortgage. The inflation has killed our economy. It's a nation buster. Nobody can buy a house anymore. The American dream is dead. The money they can't get, the interest rates through the roof. And on day one of my new administration, we will throw out Bidenomics and replace it with Maganomics. Okay, Jim, in your opinion, if President Trump, if Trump is elected president again, will his policies bring down inflation and really improve the housing market? Well, first, it's great to hear former President Trump and President Biden talking about housing and more supply on the national stage, number one. Number two, if passed as prologue, we saw a lower regulatory environment under President Trump. We saw a, a more output from the economy and the housing segment. So I expect more of the same if President Trump is reelected. Conversely, President Biden, he has pushed forward uh, a lot of pro-building policies. He's talked about adding more supply, but we're getting this muddled message from this White House because just as just as recently, a month ago, they're going to add up to twenty to $30,000 to the cost of a new home due to new energy regulations that they are imposing on low-income low income and first-generation buyers through the FHA, USDA, and the VA. So, uh, Republican proposal is cutting regulations. Republicans propose slashing regulations that uh, they argue drive up housing costs. This includes opening portions of federal land for new home construction to increase housing supply. Uh, this might be along the same lines as the very first one with tackling zoning and land use barriers. Uh, so almost one in the same. Tax incentives. This platform includes promoting home ownership through tax incentives, particularly aimed for first time home buyers to make purchasing a home more financially feasible. Well, almost same thing as above um, and expanding home affordable uh, options. And then we've got the third one, combating inflation. Republicans argue that reducing inflation will naturally help lower mortgage rates, making homes more affordable. They also propose broader economic measures such as energy products increasing lower living cost overall. I think that the only one that tackles the question, the issue, the true issue here is the inflation, the uh, amount of inflation that we are seeing caused by um, all of the government spending that was pumped into the economy, thus increasing um, assets, tangible assets. In that case, uh, rates also uh, must stay higher in order to combat the inflation rate that consumers are feeling right now. But the one thing that I did want to absolutely address and tackle is the $25,000 um, credit for first time home buyers. And truly breaking this down, I want to start with the first principle, the first basic principle of this, which is essentially where does the money come from? So if we are sitting at the highest government debt uh, that we have seen thus far, in addition to the highest credit card debt that consumers have seen thus far, a $25,000 credit, you wonder where the heck is it gonna come from? Are they gonna raise our taxes even more to provide this to first time home buyers? Um, if so, my first thought in that is, well, wouldn't the sellers then not raise or increase the price by 25,000 um, to essentially inflate that market um, to get their piece of that pie. 
The next uh, point in this is essentially how much will $25,000 help someone in the affordable pricing bracket if there are no homes available to be sold in that bracket? In doing some research, you find that home affordability has to do with probably less than $250,000 home. Um, I would even go further to say $200,000 to $100,000 home is more of an affordability issue that um, your average American is facing when deciding to continue to rent or to go ahead and buy a home and build some equity. But in that price bracket, we are still seeing an extremely low amount of inventory. You're seeing plenty of homes hitting the market recently, nowhere near what they were prior to the pandemic and uh, prior to the, the lower interest rates that we had in 2020 through 2022. You're not seeing very many homes in the hundred to $200,000 range come onto the market. That being the case, how does $25,000 um, to that first time home buyer for the use of down payment help if they can't find a property to purchase in that price range. The next and last piece to this is let's say they do actually find a home in that price range. For example, utilizing an, a scenario of a $200,000 home at a six and a half 30 year fixed rate product um, you compare the difference between a three and a half percent down, which is $7,000 versus a down payment of $25,000. In that case scenario, you've got a borrower that is saving monthly on their budget and payments, etc., of about a hundred dollars. The difference between 7,000 Minimum down payment for an FHA loan, three and a half percent on 200,000, 7,000, or that same scenario, but putting $25,000 down, only about a hundred dollars difference in payment. And the one thing that consumers are being faced with is their debt to income ratio. Home affordability is something that means more to our American uh, population than um, all the fluff that we're seeing so there's many times when it sounds really good that you potentially can get this large incentive, $25,000, but keep in mind, it has to be used for down payment or closing cost. You have to find the home that you're looking for. You of course have to be approved in order to move forward with a home purchase or making an offer on that. I'm looking at both left and right um, and I stay in the middle. I don't like to get involved in politics too much, but if you look at the grand scheme of things, there's a little bit more substance on the right-hand side versus your left-hand side that seems to be something that was put in place in 2020 and none of it has happened. And I'm just here to give the data. I want you to make your own opinion based on this, but I would absolutely love to hear some of your feedback in the comment section. So make sure to, um, Subscribe, like, like, and subscribe, and also leave me a comment and I'll reply to that so that we can have a good conversation. I believe that the more that you're able to educate yourself on this matter, the better your chances are of actually becoming a homeowner and doing it the right way. That being said, guys, I hope you got something out of this video. And if so, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share with a friend. Uh, until then, we will catch you on the next one.